Hello, well today I've got quite a fun little project you might want to have a go at and it's making a fairly compact but rather unusual toolbox, a tool caddy. Here it is. Eee. Now this one is actually a copy of one which is in the shoemaker's workshop at the um, Colonial Williamsburg Museum in the US and um, I say it's in the shoemaker's shop, you could use it any type of tool as you'll see in a minute, the way it's been done. But I um, want to give credit for the person who popped some measurements and history about this uh, on the net. And it's the Raised Heels blog and I'll pop a, a link down below. It's a nice sized toolbox and I mean you could put anything in here from spanners for, you know, working on your car to plumbing tools to woodworking tools. Uh, to even sewing tools and I'll try and show you. I'll show you some more detailed shots in a second and I will also show you the plans so that you can make this. I'll give you all the dimensions. Essentially got the tools down each side and little lever loops and then you've got all the tools, the bigger tools down below. It was actually made so you could carry it on a leather strap over your shoulder and the rather clever thing about it, I'll show you a bit more about the strap in a second, but a rather clever thing about the whole design, you might be thinking, oh, that would be quite tricky to get your hand in, it does stop pilferers, but um, you can actually remove the handle. So it's got this little metal nail loop, and you just literally slide the handle, and out it comes. <laughs> it's nifty. And then you can really get into that box. So it's a rather nice little construction. There is an added feature. This strap has a dual function. It's actually a shoemaker's stirrup strap. Now when you're sewing uh, the, the sole of a shoe, I have a wooden clock here but it will show you the principle. Basically you put the strap over around the sort of bottom of the shoe to hold it over your knee and the other end of the strap you put your foot through to get some pressure and then you can do your sewing around the shoe and the strap sometimes called a shoemaker's stirrup holds it all in position on your knee rather well so yeah it's quite an ingenious one uh, dates from about 1660 so it's quite an old design. I actually went on um, the Colonia Williamsburg Museum website to see if I could find it. And there is a picture of the interior of the shoemaker's workshop. But it's too small, I think, on here to show you properly, but it's just down there, a little toolbox. I'll show you some slight closer views of the box and then I'll actually put the plans up on screen. So. This is, um, we're looking top down on it at the moment, side view. So what I did with mine, you wouldn't have to do it this way, I actually sunk in uh, this, these side panels. So I actually sunk them into the ends. So I did a, a joint down here, just so that it's nice and flush down. And then I glued it, and for sort of partly decoration, partly securing, I got some hand hammered copper nails and tapped those in. I just thought quite nice to try and keep it vaguely in period. The handle is quite interesting because it's actually held in by this pin. So you can see that pin's locking it and to remove the handle take the pin out so that's the pin and then you can slide the handle that way like that and then out it comes and you've got lovely access inside the box and you can see in here get all my clobber out the way <laughs> I've got my tools and what I've done on the walls let me show you a view so you can see a bit more I've got little leather uh, loops so again I've copper nailed into position now I dig those leather loops before I glued the sides. So I did them 
when these were just planks of wood, basically, because I thought to actually hammer inside the box wouldn't be very easy. Okay, that's the other side. Hopefully, you can get the idea there. So in this case, I decided to have some just single loops and some where you had loops top and down deeper in the box. It doesn't really matter. But it's quite nice because you can hold all your different little tools around the sides and any heavier, bigger tools can go in the bottom of the box, which is quite nice. That's the end view with a hole in each case. And the bottom of the box, I just did a, again, a jointed in base. So I just sunk it in, glued it and nailed it. So you could do this quite so sort of crudely if you wanted to and just use slabs of wood on the outside, no jointing, glue and nail, it would work perfectly okay. So that's if you like some closer views. I'll show you the plans for it next of all. So here are the plans. I've got the plans actually on two sheets and I'm hoping what you can do, you can either just use your phone and photograph your screen or you can freeze frame if you're watching the video and then jot down the measurements or whatever but um yes yeah, so this is a photograph of the actual box and i've superimposed measurements on top and then the other sheet of plans i'll show you in just a minute is the handle because it's a bit more sort of complicated than a standard handle the dimensions don't really matter too much but if you want to get something along similar lines then i'll give it imperial and then metric so the the length of the whole box on the outside is 15 inches, about 38 centimetres. The height is 10 and a half inches. That's at the highest point of the whole box. 27 centimetres, if you're metric. <laughs> Funny all these dual measurements now. And um, I'm mainly working in metric myself now. Anyway, the height of the side wall here is seven and a half inches 19 centimeters and the box width on the outside wall is eight inches or 20 centimeters so those are if you like the key measurements the holes at each end are an inch diameter so 26 mil roughly and i think that's all you need for the, the actual box the wood for the ends i use slightly thicker wood so i used three quarter inch uh, elm in this case and it's well 18 millimeters obviously in metric so you could use any wood really hardwood's quite nice because it'll take more punishment you, you could use a slightly thicker softwood and the sides here again are cut out of elm so i like the graining on it and they are half an inch thick 12 millimeters so those are the box ones box dimensions i'll show you the handle next just one thing while we have the box plan up here this metal um, spike that keeps the handle in position at the end here it's just a bit of bent tent peg you could use a skewer you could use a bit of silver steel a bit of mild steel a nail anything really just to stop it coming out so the the metal peg is put on the inside not the outside to keep this handle in position I'll show you the handle so for the handle, I used a bit of ash, nice straight grained, I actually cleft it. But again, you don't have to, you could use any bit of hard wood for the handle, use a hammer shaft actually. And the main sort of, if you like, features of it is, yeah, the bent tent peg at the end. So that is a four millimeter, three sixteenths inch bit of bent bar or nail, just going in about an inch and a quarter off the end. Say the tenon, which would go into the side of the box wall, is an inch diameter. Other end, again, inch diameter, or just under in each case, and that's an inch and a quarter shoulder tenon this end. Okay, so it's a, just a straight taper this end, and it's a shoulder tenon this end. And then you've got this notch, which is an inch and a quarter um, by about three eighths inch deep underneath the handle. And the handle main body inch and three eighths, 36 millimeters, give you a rough idea. Again, the measurements aren't critical as long as they match your box. So overall, this piece of wood 
it was 15 and three quarter inches, 40 centimeters on the one I did. So that's the key handle that dimensions. So hopefully again, you can just gra grab the screen or jot down some notes. It's not critical, just do it for whatever wood you have available. Well, there you are, quite a fun project for really a whole variety of you know, anything from sewing tools, shoemaking tools, workshop tools. It would make a lovely Christmas present for someone if you wanted to perhaps try and make one for someone before Christmas. Anyway, thanks for watching. Also, I'd like to say a big thanks for all the book sales. My uh, book, How to Make Shoes by Hand, uh, is really selling well. So thank you very much for that. And thank you also for the kind feedback. I do appreciate the feedback on Amazon that people have been giving me. And it also helps other people as well. So thanks for that. And I'll see you in the next video. Okay then, bye-bye.